All right. So thank you so much, everybody. I know we have some um, guests here to listen, which I'm really excited about. I'm excited to hear from everyone about their internships. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do during the semester because I love hearing about what all of the students are doing throughout the semester. Um, so I'm not going to talk a lot at all right now. I am just going to have all of the students talk to you. Um, so there is a question and answer little option or the chat. So if people do have questions, if you want to pop them in there, um, that would be great. And we can see if any of the students have any answers for you um, or if you have questions about particular internships or anything that any of the students are doing, um, feel free to ask those questions there. That would probably be the easiest thing. Um, so we're just gonna jump right in. So Emma, take it away. Hi everyone. Um, so I created my internship at SEAM Collaborative um, Assessment Center in um, to mass. So I'm at seeing as an internship center students learning how to structure their education setting. Students in the one through class students elementary, middle school, and high school based on their age and their social emotional um, assessment. So currently current right now, I think there's only nine kids in the whole school. So it's, it's very small. So High school, I think there's like four students, and middle school, now there's down to one also. Um, you're just there now, down to one, two, two. It's very small. Um, so, the assignment is the same assessment in the center. It's an alternative educational center that students attend daily for up to nine weeks. Slash four times a day. The center's goal is to provide a stable environment for students without educators. And clinicians determine the best long term educational placement for students. So sometimes it depends on how severe the reason for the kids are being there for. Um, they can actually extend their time there. So um, I had no two students recently. They were there, they started in September and they're still currently there because um, one of them is so high risk that like no other place will accept them. So um, the same collaborative will just keep them because uh, it's the best thing for them. <clears throat> so the population team serves its students ages 3 to 18 who are currently on an IEP, present with significant levels of cognitive delay, um, requires moderate to significant modifications to the common core, um, present with challenging behaviors, so like aggression, or self injury. Um, have been diagnosed with autism, developmental delay, um, language delay, and some determinative genetic disorders. So, the roles of the staff. Um, so, there's therapists and school psychologists. Um, we do check ins with the students and allow for students to go into the office whenever they need it. Um, teachers, like, they help to make sure students are doing their work and go to state for the data analysis as well. And the teachers, like, they're not like, Specifically, like assign these students work. Like the students are working on work from like their specific um, town. So if they finish all that work, sometimes the, the teachers will get more tests. It's not about grades, it's about like their mental health. Um, and then data analysis collects data from the students, and then all the data goes towards the student final report for their long term educational plans. Um, the role of the intern, so shadowing different staff members, like the teachers, the, the analysis, therapists, um, playing group activities for high school, middle school, and elementary school. So we're playing activities really just focused in, focus in, in on like social emotional activities. Um, so sometimes I, I will just not do with the kids because this is what they want to do, and it's, it's still like social emotional because social skills day. You get to talk to them, they have to talk to you, um, learn how to take turns and stuff like that. So like, it, it's not like crazy based. It's very simple sometimes. Um, educate yourself by reading the student file. So they have um, a bunch of files in like a locked um, cabinet. So sometimes I have free time, which is I ask for the keys and I go and I, I read the files. 
um, to just learn from all of them. And we can choose what to do next. Um, why I chose engineer. Um, so honestly, this, this place was not my first choice. It was my last choice. Um, I wanted to do an internship after home, but those places were not going to talk to me. Then I heard about Steve and I became interested because it was completely different than I had ever experienced before. So I was willing to get a different experience from what I really wanted. So some of the challenges that come along with this internship is you don't get paid, unfortunately. Um, you're not going to help situations where students are gross so you are able to physically help so if, if the student is becoming aggressive i just have to stand in the corner of the room or leave the room because i'm not trying to protect myself or protect my staff um and another big thing is in order to stand and check the student the therapist has to ask permission by the student and sometimes the student says no so that's kind of like like losing um you know an experience um, what I love most about this team is that the staff are extremely welcome. My first day there, they made me feel like at home. They made me feel like I was a part of the team, like right off the bat. Um, I learned something new every day I'm there, so like I'm constantly asking questions, and I probably ask the same question repetitively, but they're amazing with answering all my questions. Um, to make sure I have a full understanding of everything. Um, I'm able to plan activities for group time, and with my supervisor, so it just help, helps make me feel like I'm part of the team. Um, my supervisor is extremely flexible with my hours, and I want more hours. My supervisor, my supervisor will give me passes I'm able to do remotely, so things like plan activities, find resources, find outside therapists, et cetera. Um, and I'm just able to gain hours through that way. And overall, it's close to the max, so it's, it's not a long commute, which is a big um, thing for me. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all about seeing out of. Thank you. I'm glad you brought up the, the fact that it just, it wasn't your first choice. And I appreciate that um, because I think that that happens, but you know, that the internship. Yeah aren't your first choice sometimes because sometimes places don't get back to you you struggle with um finding something and sometimes you might interview at a place that's not your first choice and you, you don't get offered that position um it happens and so sometimes some when something's not your first choice it ends up being a great choice anyway and it sounds like this one ended up being a really great option um yeah it was it was really nervous at first because of how different of send was for me. Like I'm used to anger. So when I found out that I was gonna go to the therapeutic school, I was I was a little nervous, but mm -hmm. I, I love it. It's amazing. That's great. No, it's a great thing for people to keep in mind. I think that you never know. You know, you never know what that's gonna be like and what that will turn out like. So to sort of be open to anything. So great. Thank you. All right. Next, next up. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So I don't know if I should try and present it. Is that coming through? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so my internship is at the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner's Office, which is actually in Concord, New Hampshire. It's a little bit outside of the realm for a psych internship, but it's one that I've been at for almost a year now. And I thought it would be best to just keep getting as much experience there as I can as possible, because I'm probably going to end up working there after I graduate for a little bit. Um, so just for a little bit of some preliminary information about the site, um, it is at Concord Hospital. It's not through Concord Hospital. It's just kind of like they just use their space there. They have a separate building off to the side that they kind of used for their office space. And this kind of like, just like one of the offices that's in there. Um, the main mission statement for them is just to promote the health and safety of all the citizens of New, of New Hampshire by accurately determining, you know, the cause and death of the deaths that happened throughout the state. And they 
pretty much serve, of course, the entire population. They work with a lot of different people, police, family, whoever, um, that come to their office. So a wide array of people. Uh, the main staff and their roles, um, the chief forensic investigator of New Hampshire is Kim Fallon. She's the main person that I report to who I was talking about when I got my internship and who let me in there in the first place. Um, she kind of oversees all facets of like the office and everything that goes on there. And she kind of manages the more office side of it, like the more pay paperwork side and more just like the office side. And the, her kind of assistants are Lisa Riley and Corey Jernberg. They kind of, I kind of end up seeing them more often in my day. They kind of give me a lot of like office work when I'm up in the office doing that side of the job. Um, but they kind of like answer all of like the front end stuff. Like they coordinate with like funeral homes and families and everything else that kind of like come in. So kind of like more like in intake work kind of. And they also manage the like uh, computer system for all of like the deaths that happen and keep it really like nice and organized. And there's the evidence tech, Sue, Sue Watkins. She's more of like the, she's more of like handles the more investigative side, like more of like the police side of everything. Um, she has a bunch of investigators that work for her that go out and re respond to scenes and call into the doctors and everything. And she handles more of like the investigative side. And then there's the actual doctors themselves. They're forensic pathologists that actually perform Form the autopsies that are done. Uh, Mitchell Weinberg and Jenny Duval. Jenny is like the head one. She's kind of like the main one that does it. Mitchell is kind of like just right under her sort of. And they do all of like the medical stuff. Like they are the doctors that go and do the autopsies. And they also like inform the families of the results that happen and, and all that kind of stuff. In terms of my responsibilities at the site and why I'm there, it's kind of split into two different halves where there's the office side and then there's the morgue side of it where you're down there. Um, in the more office side of things, I'm just kind of do like filling out some forms, numbering stuff, like basic paperwork stuff for toxicology and stuff that comes through. I do various data projects for Kim, my supervisor, where if she's giving a, pre a presentation or she's giving a press release to media, I'll actually be the one to put together that PowerPoint for her and like gather the data, which is actually kind of cool. And I kind of like, I kind of do like a lot of the main office stuff too, where I like make a lot of like the supply kits for the investigators to go out and do their jobs and just kind of like help out in any way that I can. And then the more cooler, more interesting side of it is the like autopsy side of it and also going out on some of the cases with some of the investigators. So like half of the day, usually in the morning, I get to go down to the morgue and I get to see whatever cases that happen that day. I usually, it depends. It's not every single day, but sometimes there's some pretty cool cases that come in that you get to see. And it's just very cool and educational for me personally and for what I want to do, which kind of leads into why I'm there in the first place. Um, after my time at Merrimack, I am hoping to go to med school. And so I will hopefully become a doctor with the a forensic pathologist too, like Jenny and Mitchell. And so it's kind of aligns with my goals and kind of with what else I'm here for at Merrimack too, with my forensic science degree too. And also it's just the best staff to work with there too. Some challenges would be obviously if you don't have a tough stomach, if you can't handle stuff like that, it's probably not the spot for you to be there. Um, a, a lot of the work, even just in the more office side and putting together a lot of the power PowerPoints and slides requires you to view some images that some may deem disturbing, of course. Um, but besides that too, they're also just like a little bit selective in who they let in. I had to wait about a year and a half before I was able to get in. So I was very lucky and grateful for them to have let me get in. I was just kind of very persistent in begging them to let me in kind of. And also sometimes like when you're first meeting a lot of the staff there, some of them have like some tough personalities. It's kind of the norm for I've come across in like the medical profession too. Like they kind of, whether, whether it's ego or just whether there's like, they have a lot of kids that come through this. So they'll probably just shuffle you through. There's not really want to get you or get, get to know you on like a tough personal basis. But so that's why I found it best to just kind of like warm up to them and ask them a lot of questions when appropriate and just kind of like ease into it kind of. And honestly, what I personally like about it is working with the staff. I honestly am so excited to go there. Two, two, I only get to go there two days a week. But it's like the best two days that I have during during the week because I see the staff so often and I 
am been so friendly with them now that I text them from my personal phone and we're kind of like, it's really fun to work, work there and everything. And also it's just like viewing the autopsies too. It's very, edu- it's very educational for the work I do here at Merrimack too, because I'll do work in some of my classes and I'll be able to go there and like test myself and my knowledge like in my anatomy class I can obviously like it's very interesting work too and what's really cool is going out on the cases and doing the more in in investigative side because you get to see a different facet of it that you don't get to see there it's out working out in the real world and excuse me it's kind of like a rarity at times but the few times that I've gotten to do it it's very very cool and that's kind of where I ended off at. Well, I have to say this internship is a perfect example of um, doing an internship somewhere to make sure it's what you really want to do. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like the exact place I would say, test that out first and make sure it's the environment you're going to be comfortable in for sure. Because of the things you described. And I, I don't know if I ever would have been, I, I don't know if I've ever met someone that sounds so excited to go and like, be, that's so great. I love that. That is so great. That's how you want to feel when you're going in to do that work and you want it to be really interesting and exciting and you want to get along with the people that also get interested and excited about the work. So I love that. That's such a, this is the perfect example of why you do an internship somewhere. Cause you really want to be sure that's what you want to be doing all day, every day. Yeah, exactly. um, so yeah. that's great. And I also appreciate the persistence because these are really uh, rare opportunities. Some of these are really hard. And so I appreciate that because it obviously paid off. So that's great. Awesome. So, all right. You. Yeah. All right. Next. Okay. Uh, I'm doing my internship in the scan lab here at Merrimack. Um, those who aren't familiar where that is, it's in the ground floor of O'Reilly. Uh, and my supervisor is Professor Sajik. All right, again. Same thing. Um, oh, well, you might have to oh. show it how it was before because I it's still saying it's loading. Oh, is it not? Can you all see it? No. Let me try again. There we go. Oh. Oh. They kept doing this to people yesterday. I would leave it just like this because we can see it perfectly. You can see it? Okay. Yeah. I'm just worried it will do that again. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. All right. So I chose to do it, uh, my internship in the scan lab. Um, I've been a student athlete here for the past four years and I can more than anyone understand kind of like the mental difficulties that you can go through um, balancing classes and uh, responsibilities as an athlete. Uh, more so like towards that point, I do want to work with athletes uh, moving down the line. Um, so working now with the kind of like the lower level of student athletes is definitely a valuable experience for me. And then uh, kind of just being like in the, in those shoes myself, I saw this as an opportunity to help like other athletes avoid kind of the struggles that I went through. Uh, for challenges, um, I'd say probably the biggest one is finding participants. Um, Took a, took a long time for me to get a good number of people to kind of join the focus groups. Um, I think a big part of it was kind of confusion. Um, so our work is with student athletes, not specifically varsity student athletes. Um, so you'd be eligible to join if you went to the gym twice a week or once a week. You don't have to be a, a member of a team here on campus. And I don't think that was uh, communicated very clearly. Um, part of that obviously was my responsibility. Um, so because of that, we find difficulty having participants. And when we do, a lot of the times uh, they've shown up and said, we don't want to do this anymore, which obviously is within their rights. So um, they step back. A lot have uh, difficulty speaking ill of their team or their coaches. Um, very understandably so. Uh, another big challenge was after kind of sitting down with them, hearing what they have to say, um, going over the data. You have to go back to the recording, look at all the transcripts, blur out any names. So it is very tedious work. Uh, it's not difficult, but it takes time. Uh, so that's definitely a challenge. 
Uh, looking back at it again, it was really nice to work with athletes, uh, see what they hear. More specifically, it's nice to hear from other athletes at Merrimack, other than my teammates, kind of hear their experiences, whether it's with their coaches or with their teammates. Every team has a different culture. So it's nice to hear these things, uh, both both positives and negatives. Um, and the biggest one, I think, for me is uh, Professor Sajic, a professor I've had a lot of classes with over the past four years, I think two or three classes. So this has been an opportunity to kind of learn from her as a researcher rather than just as a professor. Uh, her field is very similar to what I want to go into, um, whether it's social or sports psychology. So I've found it as a very valuable experience to kind of just listen in to what she has to say, any advice she has, uh, and all that stuff. So obviously being alone on this project was um, a bit scary at first, but I've definitely enjoyed it. That's all I have. Great. There's a couple of things I think. One, I love kind of talking about the difficulties because I think that it's good to go through that a little bit of the what was hard and what you're learning from it. It'll help you when you do your own research. You'll know, you know, that's great to learn from. And I also love that we've had more and more students that are doing more in-depth work with the professors on campus doing research between this past summer and last semester and this semester, there's more students that are doing this. And I worked with the professors in the department to kind of develop it purposefully. And you're getting to know them so much more. And it's such a nice relationship to develop beyond the classroom because you're just, there's so much more that they're doing that you don't even hear about. So it's just a really nice opportunity. Um, so it's I'm glad that more people are taking advantage of it. So that's great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Can you see that? Yes. Um, all right. So I did my internship at a Montessori school, the Rockland in Malden and the ages I worked with were infancy. So they start at three months old and they go up to about three years old. Um, so a lot of people don't know what Montessori is. Um, it's a method of education that is based on self-directed activity and hands-on learning and collaborative play. Um, I provided a visual of like the core principles of Montessori it's also very student centered, like these kids can get one-on-ones like, and we work with the kids individually and as a group. Um, so they have that opportunity to have like their own time with a teacher. Um, they have two mission statements. They have more of an educational mission statement and like a personal one. So the educational one is Encourage learning through exploration and discovery provided through a developmental curriculum that includes language development, reading readiness, math manipulatives, computer skills, music, artistic experience, science projects, social studies, and multicultural activities. Um, I'll touch a little bit on like the activities they do later on, but that's kind of like the baseline for it. And then their more emotional mission statement is to build self-esteem, self-confidence, mutual respect, positive social skills um, through a program that of behavioral skills and positive reinforcement. And I think they did a really good job um, where I went to really go by their mission statements. I've been places before, I've worked places before that all have mission statements. And they, I wouldn't say they go by it, um, but the Rockland is really, really good at sticking by it and making sure that they follow what they believe in. So I really liked that about it. Um, so the staff and how it's kind of set up, um, my supervisor slash the director of the program, her name's Sharon Hanley. She oversees the nursery school building because there are two. There's one across the street that's older kids. And then there's the building that I was in. Um, she does daily observations and she comes in and makes sure everything is being done correctly and everyone, all the kids are getting what they need. She is directly my supervisor as well. Um, not only like the director, but like any kids, they're 
they do allow a lot of programs from other schools too. So she's there, she's your direct person that you talk to every day. Um, and then she's been doing this for at least 20 years. So she's had a lot of experience. Um, and the way that the schools based off of in positions is you have a lead teacher and lead teachers have Montessori credentials. There's a whole other um, program you can go through um, to get specifically your Montessori license to be able to teach their values. And then you can get care course certified, um, which is you basically just take like an early childhood course. Um, it's not that long. And so they have both of those so they can be the head teacher of the room. And then you have just a regular teacher um, who is care course certified and has a child development class completion. Now I did start my internship mid January, like right before we, not mid January, like right before we got back. And I actually, she gave me the opportunity to take that course. Um, so I actually am now a certified teacher there. Um, and I continue to stay, I'm going to continue to stay there and do that as well as another job. Um, and I'm currently in a child development course right now. So I'll have that completion um, by the end of the semester. Um, and then they have assistants that are there. They don't need any type of qualification. Um, sometimes they have someone come in and do CPR certification, which everyone needs to get while you're there. Um, but you don't need any like prerequisite um, things done to be an assistant there. Um, a role of an intern, or this goes for anything as well, because there was really nothing different that I did that anyone else did, but you be an assistant to the lead teachers, you bring the kids around the building because all kids need to be escorted everywhere. Um, you take them to the bathroom, you watch them at recess. If you're in an infant room, there's a set schedule. They have to be changed every two hours, fed the every two to three hours. The parents will tell you when the baby starts there. Um, we actually have a system. We have, every room has an iPad and every single thing the child does whether that's eat, go to the bathroom, an activity that they did, um, you input it in that iPad and the parents get the information sent to them at the end of the day. Um, and this also gives them a chance to see what their kids are doing while they don't have them because a lot of these kids are there from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it gives the parents an eye on to see what their kids are doing throughout the day. And just to, um, another thing is just to make sure to be present and make sure every child is safe and everything's working smoothly because with kids, these are some really smart young three-year-olds, which is crazy, but they will come up to you and be like, so-and-so hit me, so-and-so pushed me, so-and-so bit me. But what we re they really stress is since there are a lot of teachers in the classrooms, we have our eyes on everyone. So things like that don't happen because there have been incidents where like a kid will go home and tell their parent they got hurt from another student. And we can either say we watch them all day and we never saw that occur or we must have not have been noticing and stuff like that. So it's just, they stress the importance of paying attention to the students. Um, with permission, I have supposed to have these photos on here. I had to obviously blur faces, but this is kind of what I've done. Um, you can do anything from like arts and crafts to like helping the kids. Um, the setup, the like third picture from the left is what a preschool classroom actually looks like. It's actually just like a big room and it is separated, but these are the kids during lunchtime. I don't know if you can see the shelves, but that's all their, what they call works. They don't have toys. They don't have like supplies. They call them works as they're basically what we'd call assignments. <laughs> um, I have an example of one of the ducks, like the kids, like put a duck on each thing and count how many there are or the bottom left I have like they're doing a raking work where like they had a cup where they poured it all in and they were separating it um and stuff like that they teach them a lot of everyday life skills at the very very young age in the toddler rooms they'll have one cup of water and an empty cup and they teach them to pour and like do it neatly and put it down um it was definitely a cool to see a different type of education um, than your standardized school. 
And then the last picture on the right is what the infant room looks like. It's not that exciting because they're three months old and they don't really play with toys. So it's just a bunch of cribs and like Montessori wooden toys, some walkers and stuff like that. Um, and so this is my overall. I chose this because it gives me, I've worked with middle schoolers and I've worked with high schoolers. So I really wanted to see this type of age group in this type of school because it really helps me see child development because I started in January and the kids that were babies are now in a toddler room. Like they develop so fast and I see every developmental stage and it really helps um, me learn more about it because I wanna either go into child psychology or just like working with kids. And like, I feel like having, being able to see their developmental stages is really interesting and seeing what they're doing and what leads them there. Um, some things are challenging, which is you're always on the go. You're never resting. You're never, it's, I went my, I go Monday and Friday, eight to six. So I work 10 hours a day on the go. Like I nap time. I can't nap. I have to watch them while they're sleeping. Like <laughs> you have, you're always on the go, um, schedules, making sure like every kid is on the set schedule for the day information updates, incident reports. Luckily, I haven't had to do any, but those are very stressful because you actually have to like write what happened, talk to the parent, get their signature. And there has been backlash from parents when their kid gets hurt and they're like questioning you on it, which I mean, it's kind of crazy to me because they're little kids. They're running around. Some of them are learning to walk, so they're going to fall. But yeah, but I think the best part of the internship is the kids. And like I said, watching the development, the staff, they're super nice. I love them all. Um, I've gotten really close with some of them as well. Um, but yeah, the kids are awesome. They're so excited to see you. They're so excited to come to school. Like they're young. So it's like a new thing and fun thing for them. It's not like, you know, your typical high schoolers, just like I'm here to be here. These kids are super excited. And I think that what is what gets me excited. This was not my first internship choice. I actually had another one lined up and that fell through, but I'm honestly really glad it did because I love going. It's like a refreshing time throughout my week to be able to go hang out with like a one-year-old and see like what they're up to and everything. But yeah, that's my internship. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's cool seeing I, the Montessori just style is so different. I love that you shared pictures because people, I don't know how many people are familiar with it, but it is so different and it seems so, sparse, but it's cool because it really is about fostering the kind of the kid's imagination without kind of introducing all those like colors and they have to kind of do that for themselves and they do, you know, because kids are pretty awesome. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Great. All right. Emily's up next. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So um, I did my internship at Partners in Child Development, um, PCD's mission and vision. Um, their vision is nurturing the growth and potential of every child, striving for respect, integrity, inclusion, innovation, and excellence in everything that they do. And their mission is to create a world in which every child can be seen for their abilities and given the opportunity to realize their full potential. Um, so PCD has two locations. They have the Andover location, which is home to the Anderson School, Woodbridge School, and toddler groups, and the Lawrence location, which is for early intervention services and parent-child groups. Um, they serve, I work specifically with the early intervention group. Um, so they serve um, Methuen, Lawrence, Andover, and North Andover, and children from ages birth to three that qualify for EI services are the ones we're going to see. So you can really qualify for EI for anything, um, developmental delays, diagnosis of certain conditions, not meeting age-appropriate milestones, being in the NICU, um, anything that you would require um, extra help. So there's a lot of staff in EI. Um, there's a lot of different aspects to helping a child with a developmental delay. So we have developmental specialists who provide services based on the needs of the child, physical therapists, speech and language pathologists, 
nurses who aid in medical management and evaluations, social workers, so if the family's in foster care or um, we need to make sure the child's getting proper resources, social workers get involved, and then intake services. So these are more like office um, positions where they help place children with a EI provider and make sure that the family is getting everything that they need. Um, I work specifically with Brianna Dalton, who is a developmental specialist. Um, she got a degree in early childhood education and sociology and then a master's degree in special education. Uh, she's been an EI for nine years. She started working in a daycare and kind of built her way up into EI. And she was also a paraprofessional in a high school, but liked the young children in EI better. And her responsibilities um, range from a bunch of different things. So she does home visits. Um, we go out to homes and work with the kids there. Service coordination, making sure that the kids are getting everything that they need. She runs a play group on Thursdays where kids get dropped off um, at the Andover office for two hours and we do different things with them there. And then evaluations as well, making sure that kids are qualified for EI and that those kids get the services that they need. Um, my role as the intern, it's a lot of shadowing. Um, I watch the supervisor interact with children and parents and I ask as many questions as I need. Um, but depending on the family, I do get to assist and play. So I play with the kids, make sure that they're being safe. And I, uh, as I've been there longer, I'm able to assist in intervention. So we sing songs, we sign, we rehearse colors, numbers, and letters. We do a lot of modeling. Um, we do squeezes, which is like kids who need compressions. We give big hugs. Um, and then I also assist in evaluations. So I help them look up scoring criteria and help them um, add up the testing scores. I chose PCD for my internship because for one of my classes, assessments in special ed, um, we visited the facility and I absolutely loved it there. So I reached out to my contact there and they were able to provide me with the opportunity to intern with them. Um, so far, I've loved building connections with all the kids. They get so excited to see me when I go there and even building relationships with the parents because a lot of them surprisingly are in the psychology field. So it's cool to see where they, they're coming from too. Um, and it's really cool watching the kids build new skills because in, I've been there such a short amount of time and um, one kid who I started with first, it was my first day and his first day in EI, and he's grown so much in the time that we've been there. So it's really cool seeing um, how they're able to build those new skills so quickly with the help of EI. Um, but with challenges, a lot of things can come up with young kids and with families. So their sicknesses, weather and snow days, last minute cancellations. Um, sometimes you're dealing more with the parents than the children because they're so young that the parents have anxieties that you can't really um, get over with that, or you can't help the child until the parents get over their anxieties about it. Um, so it can be challenging to work with the family sometimes. And yeah, that's my presentation. I appreciate when people get a chance to work with kids and their parents, because it's that's a challenge. So it's really good experience to have. <laughs> so you're getting a lot of experience with a wide range of people just by having to have those interactions because that can be really hard. So it is good. It's hard, but it's good experience. So it's great. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Brian is up next. Hey. Can everyone see and hear me good? Yes. Perfect. So uh, like a couple other folks, my internship isn't as psychology focused, but my internship site for the semester is in Merrimack's uh, Office of Community Standards um, up in the third floor of the SAC. So like I just mentioned, up in the third floor of the SAC, uh, also known as Student Conduct Office or, you know, the office you go to when you get in trouble on campus. So our main goal is to ensure all students in Merrimack learn, live, and thrive in a safe and inclusive environment that values integrity, honesty, and growth. So basically the way we go about that is making sure 
all students abide by the student handbook that you um, read at the beginning of your freshman year and hopefully every year going beyond that as we update it further and further. Um, and again, our main population is Mid and Merrimack students, but also uh, all of the members of the Merrimack community. So that includes faculty, staff, or even um, common vendors that come, in, come through the college frequently. So my direct supervisor is Ms. Katie Regan. Um, her official title is Assistant Dean of Students and Deputy Title IX Coordinator. Um, she went to Roger Williams University and then got her master's in student development at Ohio State University. Um, before coming to Merrimack, she was at Quinnipiac for a little bit. Um, but her main goal is um, you know, oversee the non-academic behavior issues here at the school um, and also provide supportive measures and resources for any Title IX complaints, respondents, um, and manage the budget of the Office of Community Standards. Um, in a more activity or what she does on a day-to-day, -day, it's a lot of meeting with um, students, mainly getting them prepped for if they have a student conduct hearing or they need to meet with somebody based off um, you know, possible infractions to the student handbook. Um, and on top of that, she does a couple other things for the college like orientation and um, like I said earlier, Title IX complaints. So what do I do for the office? Uh, very good question. So first and foremost, I conduct any and all student conduct boards that I'm able to. A student conduct board is if a student breaks uh, a rule here on campus and it could lead to a loss of housing, they are always guaranteed to have a, a board with um, you know, their peers at this school. So that includes students, uh, faculty, advisors, and all that stuff. But I would also sit on there um, and listen to what happened and see what kind of sanction or that would be appropriate for what happened. Besides just being on the student conduct boards, uh, I also go through the student handbook and any trainings we do based off of um, our student handbook or just conduct in general. So I went over and I read the entire student handbook cover to cover recently, and we just started making some changes based off that. I also do a lot of administrative work. So the classic, you know, copying, printing, shredding of internal documents, you know, getting coffee, really like, you know, grunge work that all internship, all interns do everywhere. Um, but I also have the added of not doing it just for my office, but a couple of other offices up in the third floor um, and anything that might arise and they need a body um, to do something, I'll be there. So some common questions that a lot of people have already answered. Um, so why this office? I am someone who really would like to go into higher education um, and conduct is a big uh, section in higher ed that I haven't dealt with yet. So I always thought it was really cool seeing the behind the scenes work and getting to work with people in distress in a separate context and helping them as much as you can and dealing with those people who are under a lot of stresses. Uh, works well with my psychology degree so far. Um, what are some of the challenges I faced? I think two of the big ones um, is one, staying confidential. A lot of the stuff that comes through our office is either still under investigation by uh, MCPD or the Dean of Students Office, or it's just, um, you know, information you wouldn't want to get out about yourself, so you shouldn't be spreading around other people. Um, that's a that's a really big, important thing that my supervisor went over to me um, to make sure I'm not spreading any information that's sensitive based off you know, my peers or maybe even someone I don't like. And that kind of goes into the conflict of interest. Um, there are times where I have to remove myself from any situation or 
conduct boards or even if my boss starts talking about what happened over the weekend and going over um, any incident reports we got, I might have to tell her, hey, I can't talk to you about this part or I can't listen about the so-and-so or X person. Um, maybe I might know them or I have you know, certain feelings about an individual that I have to remove myself so it can be professional. What do I like the most about my office? Uh, honestly, I do love my supervisor. She's amazing. She's very much a mentor to me in moving through higher education and what I already do on campus. And especially with an internship, I've had a great chance to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with her and her teaching me a lot of things that I really wouldn't have learned if it wasn't for this internship. Um, that being said, I do also like doing a lot of this behind the scenes administrative work and kind of learning how a lot of stuff goes within the college and, you know, a lot of like inside baseball information that I would have never heard about if I wasn't just in the, in the presence of the office. Um, in terms of what my day-to-day -day looks like, it's a lot of meetings or uh, self-work. So I usually start with either a scheduled or kind of impromptu meeting with my supervisor. I, I'll come in and she'll usually explain um, anything that happened that I should be made aware of or even just like small chit chat before I go on and start working on any projects I've already been assigned. So one that I'm working on currently is any promotional material for spring weekend. Um, so making safe choices, um, you know, on or off campus, and especially having to do with inviting guests over, um, being safe at the concert, all the fun stuff you get in your email that not a lot of people read. Um, and that's pretty much what I do. And that's my internship. As a representative of college, I feel like I have to put these numbers out. So if you're experiencing a problem on campus, please feel free to reach out to any of these offices. And if you want to learn more or have any questions, please feel free to ask me and reach out. Great. Thank you. The tough one, because you have to kind of have those dual relationships and keep everything. Um, yeah, it's it, that's tough, but it's a good practice kind of keeping the balance and learning how to do that early and managing those relationships. So it's good professional experience for sure. So that's great. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now we have two students. Um, we did a quick swap behind the scenes of a couple of presentations because we have two students that actually have a meeting for their internship. Um, so the next two students are actually uh, two that are at Coaching for Change. Um, so they are going to each talk about their experience there. All right, well, hi everybody. My name is Angie and I just wanted to thank you for letting me join your class for the day. Um, I have two positions at Coaching for Change. So um, yesterday when my class was doing this um, whole thing, I had to work the career fair as a um, an ambassador for um, Coaching for Change. So I'm here now. And I also wanted to say congratulations to everybody that was able to get an internship this semester. Um, I know that it's uh, really hard, but Katie, you've done a great job of helping um, all of us kind of just find where we belong, how to apply to all these different things. Um, and I really feel that it's definitely heavily prepared me uh, for the real world. So Thank you for that. And thank you everybody for letting me um, join your class. So like I said, oops, I don't even know how to do this. Oop, oop. Oh. You could leave it there too, because um, it's sort of been having a weird time loading for people and you can just kind of like look on the, the slides on the side. 
I don't even know if it will let me do that. <sighs> do you see like my mouth? Okay, here we go. Okay. So basically, okay. <laughs> Sorry, this is not working for me right now. It's okay. All right, I might have to stop sharing it for one second. Here we go. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay. So um, the organization I work for, it's still not letting me click on it. Well, okay, I guess I'll just start. Um, The organization, obviously, that that I work for is coaching for change or C4C. Um, the main location is in Taunton. So there's a big office there where people can go for training to talk to HR, uh, talk to the executive people or um, just kind of hang out. And uh, my location is at Leonard Middle School in Lawrence. So that's about 10 minutes away from here conveniently. Um, and basically the mission statement that C4C kind of runs by um, is being a network of support for kids. Everybody needs some sort of network of support. Um, and C4C's main mission uh, that they kind of want mentors to enforce uh, to the students that they get or in the schools that they go to is that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, some people find school to be a waste of time or um, no value added to them. And Obviously, I think we all go through that. <laughs> Definitely a big schlump. Um, but especially in areas like Lawrence or um, a lot of the district partners C4C goes through, there's a lot of kids just um, kind of suffering from the same funk. Um, just because being in those areas, it's really hard for kids to have transportation or um, just the entitlement to a better education. It's it's really hard for them to acquire. So basically what we do at C4C is kind of go into those schools, help kids find that light at the end of the tunnel, help teachers even find that light at the end of the tunnel, um, and really just work with kids in order to maximize their success and confidence in uh, being in school. Um, and <laughs> I don't know why this is still not letting me... Let's see. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to try this one more time. I can still keep going, but. Okay, uh, so basically there are a lot of uh, staff roles at the school that I work for through um, C4C. There's a lot of resource officers, a lot of guidance counselors, um, and something that I never really heard of before, there are a lot of truancy officers, um, which are basically people who ensure um, that they kind of study the legalities of students' um, getting educated in the state of Massachusetts. So basically what this looks like is they'll have a meeting with the guidance counselors, the superintendent, basically anybody that uh, works in the school system, the guidance counselors, like I uh, mentioned before, and they'll sit down and go through the amount of absences that some students have had. And if they're nearing a certain amount, um, kind of, I mean, what they do in Lawrence, which I've never um, kind of like seen or heard of before is they'll kind of go into these students' houses in the mornings and try to wake them up and uh, make sure they have transportation to school, even if it's the truancy officer um, driving them. And that's kind of been a big part of my semester so far, because at first I was kind of put in classrooms and I couldn't really find a great fit for myself um, there. So I talked to my supervisor and they put me in the guidance office and um, for the past couple of weeks, because um, you can kind of think about it as like a fiscal year. Oh, is it working now? You can kind of think about it as like a fiscal year. Um, there uh, A certain date comes in the school year um, and they have to make sure that they file something for uh, each student that's missed a certain amount of school. Um, 
And what they have to do is take them and their families to court in order to make sure that the student um, starts to attend school. Um, and in the state of Massachusetts, when the student turns 16 or um, if the parent feels that school is too much of an obstacle for everyday life for the student or their family, um, they are able to withdraw the student from school and the student is able to withdraw themselves uh, from school at, at the age of 16. Um, my direct supervisor, her name is Mackenzie Dupre. She works for um, Coaching for Change as well. She's the college coordinator. Um, she graduated LaSalle University with a degree in um, sociology and a minor in psych. Um, she was a college mentor up until last year and then actually uh, started like working full time for C4C. So she puts everybody in contact with um, their internship sites, supervisors and all that jazz with um, the logistics of doing these internships. And basically um, what my role is as a mentor, which I kind of uh, mentioned before, is just to go into classrooms, um, help out around the classroom. You can kind of think about it as similar to a TA position, um, kind of just facilitate group conversations with kids, facilitate connections with kids and and um, put them all into small groups or just help out with whatever is going on in the classroom, enforce classroom policies. Um, and like I mentioned before, I, I was put in guidance. So I've been doing a lot of close knit work with a lot more a lot of, I guess, more psychological aspects. So um, recently what I've been doing is kind of working with the guidance uh, counselors at, at Leonard Middle School and kind of just reviewing situational and circumstantial protocols. Uh, for example, a big one at, at uh, Leonard is um, like a hygiene protocol if, if the kids aren't um, being properly taken care of or taking care of themselves. And there's a protocol for that. Um, if a child is demonstrating um, harmfulness or violence towards others, there's protocols for that. Suicidal ideation protocols for that. Um, there's a, a whole lot of um, knowledge I've been able to acquire, which I'm lucky enough to say. Um, I don't know why this keeps pausing. Okay. Can you still see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I think it's going to work now. Yes. Okay. Why did I choose this placement? Um, so at first this, this definitely wouldn't have been my, um, first option to be completely honest, um, with you. I never really saw myself working with kids and it's just, it's, it's not anything personal towards any specific kid. Um, I'm just kind of like scared, I guess, of middle schoolers to be completely candid, um, and of course I got put in a middle school, so I was a little, you know, ch challenged this year, but there was a huge list of internships and this is, uh, what I put here on the slide. This is just a small snippet of every single, um, thing being offered. And I came across C for C by chance. I kind of went through everything and got scared and all of that jazz. Um, then I did a lot of extensive research on the organization, um, and found myself really aligning with the goals which um, of the organization, which is basically just helping students find their value and their confidence again in the classroom and also doing that for teachers. Um, I'm basically there as support to everybody that I can be supportive to. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's to help students maximize their success in whatever they're doing, um, especially being in middle school. It's a really hard time in life. And at first I thought I would be terrible at it. And I don't know if I'm terrible at it. I don't know if, um, you know, the kids really do like me. I mean, I've had a, a lot of great experiences where I've walked into classrooms and the kids will be like, oh my gosh, you're back. So definitely got um, lucky with that. And uh, I kind of just thought about what it would be like to work with different age groups, because even though I kind of want to do something more corporate and adult with my degree, I thought that it would be a really um, huge asset to me to be able to say that I've worked with different age groups because it kind of redefined um, my 
concept and definition of patience and, and just what it's like to work with certain types of people in different types of environments. Um, so this internship has actually been incredibly invaluable to me, and I'm really thankful for it. Some challenges that I've faced that another mentor might face, um, depending on the area, could be language barriers. Um, so Lawrence is heavily um, Hispanic. So there's the majority of the children in the school that I'm um, at are from Mexico or the Dominican Republic. So a lot of the teachers will fully teach um, in Spanish or half Spanish and half English. Um, and something that a mentor might not be prepared for is that language barrier. I'm lucky enough to say that I'm pretty fluent in Spanish. So um, that's kind of been super helpful to me, but some people might not be, which is completely okay. Um, and it's really scary at first because some of the kids were talking about me in Spanish. And when I kind of got out there to clarify um, that I could speak in, in Spanish as well, I could understand what they were saying. It was, I kind of set the tone. Um, but that that was really hard because I, I don't want to have to do that. Um, and kids will be kids. So, you know, um, another challenge you might face being a mentor or working in a school is patience, which can also depend on the age group and depend on your own threshold and what you feel um, that you can tolerate. Um, another challenge are um, is feeling like you've established maybe a more shallow connection um, with the kids that you're around, which basically just means difficulty connecting with them. A lot of those kids are very scared to interact with somebody new and you're a college student and it's all just very new to them um, because you're coming into an environment where they've learned to gain trust and um, develop relationships with the adults that are already there so kind of being a newbie is really difficult um, and kind of something that comes with that is feeling judged um when you walk in, I think middle school is definitely a harder area because in elementary school, they don't really know that you're there. And in high school, they don't really care that you're there. But um, middle school, for me, too, that was just kind of the age of like coming to be more aware of different things around me and in my environment. Um, so it does kind of feel like a little bit of a judgy environment sometimes. But once you get past that and you feel like you've been able to establish connections with um, anybody and everybody around you, those those feelings, they will pass. But um, those are just some challenges that um, college mentors might face. And something that I love the most, <laughs> just to kind of, um, is that I love to go into the classrooms and kind of observe different management styles, how the teachers take care of the kids, um, especially over at um, Leonard. The teachers take really great care of the kids. The teachers, they love all of the kids there. They respect all of the kids there. And for the most part, um, all of the students that in every classroom that I've been able um, and in the guidance office, they respect all of the adults there. Um, and I've loved um, learning about the logistics of psych protocols, basically what, what steps to take, um, depending on the situation. That's been something that's really fascinating to me. And it kind of helped me draw a lot of connection to abnormal psych, which was an amazing class that um, I got to take um, last year. So, yeah, it's been a really um, great semester for me so far. I'm incredibly thankful to um, have been able to acquire this <laughs> internship. And sometimes we don't know what we need until it happens. Um, I was definitely really, really scared to do this because I know how I was in middle school and I know how middle schoolers can be. Um, and, when, and once I kindly, kind of got over those like first humps over those first few weeks, I've just found myself fitting in more and more every time I go in. So. Thank you. That's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Great. All right. Dahlia. All right. Let me share my screen.
Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So can I just table of contents? Let's just get right into it. I'm also working at Coaching for Change. My name is Dahlia, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Um, I'm also working at Coaching for Change and um, their mission is to empower college students to ignite change for next generation. Um, the population that C4C kind of serves is um, for Massachusetts, it's K through 12 and also schools in Rhode Island. And they recruit college students to work with students who attend um, their school partner locations. And so there's different roles for C4C. That's kind of just like an overview. I feel like Angie covered a lot of this. <laughs> um, so there's like the program director, there's the hub managers, there's college coordinators who are kind of like our like supervisors, I guess. And my um supervisor slash college coordinator is also Mackenzie. She's amazing. Um, I have really meaningful meetings with her. Um, she's just a great college mentor and coordinator and she makes sure I like have everything I need make sure she checks in yeah so the role of interns is to provide support to students in the classroom that they're in personally I felt that it was my role and responsibility to also create connections with my students so to give a bit more background about like kind of my role I did work for coaching for change last fall semester and then I found out that it could be my internship for psychology, which is really exciting because I um worked at the Oliver Middle School in Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And working at Lawrence was really exciting because that's where I'm from. So it was like, right, like it was home. And I got to work with kids who are from my like own city and got to like give back to my community, which was like the best part. And I'm very like about that. And um. So I already had made like connections with my students from the Oliver. And so this semester, I actually had to take on two sites just for like our requirements. But honestly, it has not felt like it's been a lot. It's honestly been so rewarding. I'm working at the Oliver Middle School again, and I'm also working at the Leonard Middle School, which has been amazing. I feel like the Leonard's like a second home to me just because I do have a few connections just personally there. Um, my boyfriend works there and also a lot of the office staff like I know and all that so it's just been like I've I was welcomed with open arms and it felt really good um so why I chose coaching for change is my internship I kind of talked about this a little bit it was my job in the fall and I fell in love with it and it also provided flexibility with my schedule which was really great because I feel like I take on a lot. And so having that flexibility to be able to work certain hours was really cool. Um, it also provides amazing resources and like with like the trainings and all that and great connections with students. I feel like I've established amazing connections. Um, I've already started recess groups. I did one in my fall semester, um, helping the eighth graders that I worked with um, and the Oliver applied to high schools if they did want to apply to high schools, which was so fun seeing that some of my students actually did get into their high schools that they applied to. And that was really rewarding because they were like, hey, if it wasn't for you, like, I'm like, no, 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 you did all the hard work. I just helped. <laughs> but it was super rewarding just having them like come back and be so grateful because I, I just feel like Lawrence kids are so different. Like, I just feel like they are so wholesome. They're so thankful and grateful and appreciative of the opportunities they do get because it's really hard for um, Lawrence kids to get certain opportunities just because we are like a lower income community and living there my whole life. I was really grateful to obtain certain opportunities that I did. And so just helping students get the opportunities that I like had was really like, it was very heartwarming and really like cool. So um the glows and grows of coaching for change. There are some challenges that um students may face while working there. Um they may not make connections with students as quickly as they want. I kind of faced that at the Leonard just because they I was more with the guidance counselors than anything. I got to really observe like 
um guidance counselors meeting like attendance meetings just like angie i also got to observe my first iep meeting last week with parent approval because i need parents approval for that but that was so really that was so cool and it was such a great experience like really like great learning wise and um another kind of grow would be that they also may not feel comfortable asserting themselves in the classroom due to the roles of paraprofessionals I haven't run into these problems, but it's been, I've seen it like happen, you know, you don't want to overstep and all that. So it's been really good, but that may be like some problems that they may face. And then some rewarding parts of the internship is that you get to build strong connections with your students. If one is considering like going into the guidance counselor route, then this is a great internship opportunity for you just because um you get to really like um kind of just shadow them see what they do and another benefit is strengthening certain skills like leadership teamwork and you know much more just kind of like building connections and all that so that's it that's all I have for you I feel like Angie covered a lot so I feel like I didn't have to cover as much but um, her input was great. I hope my experience kind of helped as well. But thank you for having me. Thank you. That's great. Well, it's, I love also the continuity that you were able to have, sort of being able to continue, I think was really great, being able to just sort of keep going with it um, and continue those relationships. Having that ability, I think, was really great. So thank you. Okay. All right, now we're back to our, now Yuri, I think you are up next. Is it me? Yes. Perfect, okay. Mm -hmm. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay, hello? All right, there we go. So I'm doing my internship at the Scanlab 2 at Merrimack College in Raleigh. Um, my supervisor is Dr. Kurtzel. So I'm doing a bit of different stuff than Fazal is doing. So in the lab, we've got Dr. Kurtzel and Dr. Sidecheck. Dr. Sidecheck, as Fazal mentioned already, is focused more on sports psychology and sub psychology. And Dr. Kurtzel is more into sleep and especially memory and emotions. So they are designing different experiments. The one that I'm working on is about concussions. So there was an experiment done in the fall last year about normal sleep and sleep pattern of naps were measured. And now the, we're looking at concussed people. And so what we do in the, at the experiment is first we do an eye tracking test to see if they are able to follow the eye tracking and if they pass this test then we put a mask on them and measure their sleep and see how the brain waves work during the sleep and then we compare them between concussed people and not concussed people so in the lab we have ryan she's the head research assistant and she's doing conducting the experience with us and analyzing the data and then we've got me and alvaro who are the interns and then there's a lot more research assistant. So the research goal of uh, of the scan lab is to broadly examine the me mechanism by behaviors, emotions, uh, and memories can be altered by our past experience or external internal factors and can be proved by interventions. And the three main research areas are social cognition, and behavioral neuroscience of emotional regulation, the impact of motivation and external and internal factors on performance, and the impact of sleep on learning, memory, and emotions. So the target population is different. So it's depending on the experiment that they're doing. So now the target for us, it's concussed people. So a lot of them are athletes that we get in because they often get concussed. But everybody is welcome. They have a diversity and conclusion statement which says that they want everybody to be taking part. Nobody is excluded. And yeah. So my role as an intern 
is I'm recruiting participants. So I went around and put flies up at school and I reached out to different sites to see like hospitals if they have concussed people. And then we are conducting this the, the test, as I said, first is an eye tracking test. And then afterwards we do the sleeping test, which you can see the guy with the mask on. It's from the website of the school. And then we're analyzing the sleep data. So I've been learning that. We've been doing that from the last, uh, from the sleep from the fall, from what they have from the data. And this is really challenging because like, it's not something I've never done. And once I saw it first, it was, uh, it was surprising. It's something you've never seen. And then you have to try to find the cuts between like sleep stages. So yeah, and then we do research about previous studies to see how they have conducted experiments. So if they set up a new experience that they can just copy what has been done before. So the experiment is more valid. Um, I choose this internship as I play soccer here at school. So it's flexible with hours and it's not a long commute to go there. And I also don't have a car. And I'm really interested in the, to have first-hand experience on like on doing research as I don't think I'm going to go into the field of psychology. I'm more going to the business side. I thought this is a great chance to kind of see how experiments are conducted. So some challenges that I'm facing is the pace is slow sometimes because concussed people are hard to find. There's not a lot of them. So the hardest part is to get the participants. We have only had one so far. So mainly it's been analyzing sleep now. And then working with strangers sometimes and interact with them can be challenging because there can be people coming in that are from the local community and are way older than me and I don't know them. And I have to kind of, when you put the electrodes on, it takes like an hour and you have to pick on the head so it's a bit uncomfortable. And then I'm working with few supervision, which is nice in my opinion. I like it, but it can also be challenging. Um, yeah, what I like the most is to get hands-on experiments um, and that we have flexible tasks. So it's not only one thing that we're doing, but there's different things like the experiments or analyzing sleep or looking at future research. And I also enjoy working with few superstition and being able to choose my own hours. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I'm so glad people are getting involved with the research. I think it's great. It's a really good experience. Yeah. All right. Gia's up next. Great. Oops, wrong thing. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So also loading you might oh. need to go back to oh there it is okay i would okay. leave it now we can see it <laughs> okay perfect um so i am interning at the pet and Gill house it is a nonprofit community social service agency and the office that i mainly go to is in amesbury massachusetts but they also have another location in salisbury that um, houses their food pantry so their mission statement is to support and empower individuals, children, and families by providing education, comprehensive case management, and basic needs, and by coordinating community supports that contribute to individual and family stabilization, personal growth, and development. So the population that the Pet and Go House serves, <clears throat> their catchment area is Amesbury, Newburyport, Salisbury, Byfield, Groveland, Merrimack, Newbury, Rowley and West Newbury, Massachusetts. Um, every individual child or family in need in the areas listed above. So for example, they have the food pantry, they um, have a senior support team, they um, have substance misuse, uh, behavioral health and financial stabilization. So um, some of the staff 
uh, is Lisa Prendergast. She's the director of case management. And I also listed a couple of the social workers that I've worked with, which is Anna Riley, Jennifer Kay, and Heather Penny. Um, sorry. So these are the two social workers that I worked that I work with the most. So they're my direct supervisors. Um, Lisa Prendergast, she is the director of case management. She takes care of um, all the intakes that come in. She evaluates them and place them with the social worker that she feels um, will best suit each family or child or individual's needs. Um, she's also Mass Health um, Insurance certified to help individuals apply to mass health because you have to go through like extensive training to do that so she is um one of those people she's an application counselor um and she's also a licensed reporter which comes along with social work and everything else and then anna riley is another um social worker that i work with she meets with clients. She's a member of the BEST team, which is the behavioral event and substance support team. Um, the services include navigation to treatment, treatment at all levels, access to care and benefits, case management and case coordination, outreach and check-ins, family support, and other wraparound supports. And she mainly works with clients aged um, 1 to 28, so she's kind of child-focused. Um, so the role of an intern at the Pet and Gill House, some of the responsibilities, um, include traveling in person to the office. So you have to be able to, um, also travel to appointments that may be at outside locations. So for example, I've, um, traveled with social workers for home visits, and I've also like met up with clients at, um, different Dunkin' Donuts and stuff like that, um, you also have to be um, an avid listener during important conversations and meetings, um, having respectful social skills and proper etiquette while in the presence or when directly interacting with the client. Um, it's important to read and memorize the cases that you're given quickly. So in a lot of cases, I'll just get like a list of names and I'll have to go into the database and kind of learn all of these people's background and everything, especially before I meet with the client, just so I know what I'm walking into and have um, background knowledge on stuff like that. Um, also taking notes and asking mean meaningful questions is really important just kind of to get the most out of what you're doing there, um, as well as having an input on the cases and contributing to the serious conversations. Um, I've also begun making different intake calls or like calling different places to see if they accept like vouchers and things like that. So um, it's important to be able to like speak to other people without being shy, kind of, because um, it's not really like the field of work where you can not talk to anyone. So why I chose Pet and Go House, um, I liked that it was an office setting. I also was looking for hands-on experience. Um, I liked the fact that you kind of get to see like the background of therapist referrals. So you kind of get to see the client in their rawest form, like when they need help and you can direct them to that care. Um, I also liked that there was going to be in-person client meetings um, and that I would get to speak with the clients firsthand and talk about cases and discuss them because... I took clinical practice and one of my favorite things that we got to do was like different case presentation meetings. And I get to do that every week with real life people and real life cases. And I like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's also a fast paced environment. A lot of times my supervisors will say there's never a dull moment because it's either, you know, you have to report something one day or like an intake call comes in and people are need serious help. So um, there's always a lot going on, which I like. I'd rather that than personally than an internship where I kind of just sit and don't really do much. Um, I also chose this for an opportunity to learn from professionals and be incorporated into the team. And the Pet and Go House is really intern friendly. I'm the second Merrimack intern that they've had, but they also um, have a tendency of hiring the interns that they do have. So um, one of the questions that I asked in the interview was if there would be potential to 
have a job after the fact or kind of like be incorporated into the team as more than just an intern. And they were really positive about that. So that was good to know. So some of the challenges, um, there are some emotionally demanding cases that can trigger some individuals. You talk a lot about like domestic violence um, and just other mental health things that some people may not be comfortable talking about. I know um, the staff is really supportive though. So like one of the first days that I had kind of like a really traumatic case come in, my supervisor had like texted me to reach out and said that she'd be available like all weekend to talk if I needed to, which was nice. Um, it's also a busy office. So if you don't like that kind of thing, I feel like it wouldn't be the place for you. And as well as um, you have to travel there. So if it's there's a gas cost and mileage and you have to have a car and just kind of getting there on time. Um, another challenge when you first start out, it can be overwhelming, but I still thought it was exciting. There's just a lot going on. Um, you have to learn like the new computer system that they have. You have to get used to talking to clients and being around them and just having responsibilities, um, like sharing your opinions on cases. That was like something I had to do right on the first day, which was a little overwhelming, but I thought it was kind of cool at the same time. Um, and then my favorite moments, um, as I've mentioned before, I like meeting with clients face to face. I think that's really cool. It kind of like gives me like a step into the therapy side of things because you get to just physically be present with them. Um, I like developing a network of connection with the social workers. I've got to shadow a lot of them and just be incorporated into their schedule, which is really cool because I mean, they all have the same job, but they all handle so many different cases and so many different things. Um, so it's cool to see everyone's kind of point of view. Um, I like being allowed to have opinions on cases. I think that's really important because my opinions matter. Like if we have an intake call or we just met with the client and they leave, it's like they genuinely care what I think about. And I have a lot of background knowledge from all the psych classes that I've taken, obviously, so I can kind of like pour that into what I'm saying and they take that and they roll with it. So it's really cool. Um, and then I also like writing up the session notes after meeting with the client. That might be a personal thing. Maybe other people wouldn't like that, but I like writing and I like the professional way that you have to write it. And it turns out I'm pretty good at it. So that's kind of why um, I like doing that. And yeah, that is all I have for you guys. Great. There's a lot of great experiences that you're getting that not a lot of sites offer. So that's great to hear about because I feel like getting the chance to actually interact with clients and shadow social workers and sort of see, is this something I'm interested in and want to do? Not a lot of places offer that. So it's great to hear about ones that do. So that's a great opportunity. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right, Jennifer. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So the organization that I'm interning with is NFI which stands for the Northeast Family Institute. Um, so the organization as a whole, they have a lot of programs that serve various communities. They have programs for children, adolescents, adults, seniors, and families. And their services include residential programs, day programs, educational programs, uh, family-based services, and therapeutic foster care. So it's a very comprehensive organization so no matter what population you want to work with or like environment you want to work in, I recommend applying to them because they probably have a site that would work for you. Um, so my site is called Pathways. It's in Amesbury and it's a short term residential program and they have both males and females aged 12 to 18. And they can host max 12 kids at a time. I think right now they have 10. So 
they're usually at full capacity, but right now they only have 10. And the kids are usually there for 14 to 45 days. That's like the goal of the stay. Um, they're usually there longer than 14 days, though it's very rarely 14 days. So a little bit more about Pathways. Um, they service youth and families struggling with issues like emotional disturbance, trauma, family conflict, behavioral issues, which would include truancy, running away, like getting kicked out of school, and substance abuse, which is a big one in the program. Um, and some of the things they do, they work with families in crisis to assess and stabilize them. They provide crisis intervention, intensive family treatment, clinical assessments, and recommendations for further treatment. So they have on-site therapists and they do therapeutic groups and address all the skills that these kids might be lacking, like anger management, life skills, coping skills, and stuff like that. And like I said, the goal of the program is to like stabilize them as quick as possible and get them back into the home or back into school. So they're usually there for longer than 14 days, but they try to keep it to 45. So about like two or three months, they try to get them out of there. Um, some of the staff that's there, the case manager, her name is Grace. She manages referrals, handles school placements, organizes transportation. So Pathways services all of Essex County, which in itself is a lot of towns that are spaced out. And, but they'll also take kids from anywhere. Like right now they have kids from like Marlboro and Framingham. So those are like an hour away, if not more. So organizing and finding a way for the kids to get to school can be very difficult. So that's a big part of her job. And obviously like they can't have staff members driving for hours so that's a big issue and some of the kids can't be in school or they got kicked out of school or they can't go because they have like mental health issues or learning disabilities so she tries to find like programs that would work for them or find them new schools if they got kicked out uh, she also works with dcf so a lot of the kids in the program are in like custody cases or other kinds of court cases so she manages like their court dates and getting them there and stuff like that. And then she also manages future placements. So if they need to go somewhere else after the 45 days or their stay is up, she'll find a new spot for them. And then there's the program director. He manages all the staff and oversees all the cases and treatment plans and the budget. So the kids get to go on like activities and excursions. Like we've taken them bowling and stuff. So he manages like how that's paid for. And the kids also get like an allowance so they can like go buy stuff that they want. So he deals with the money and stuff like that. And then there's a clinical team. So there's two clinicians at the site and they each have their own caseload and they create like the treatment plans for the kids and evaluations, evaluate them when their stay is like coming up, see if they can go back home or if they need to move on to another facility and stuff like that. And then they're also on call for overnights in case um, any incidents happen. And then the rest of the staff is like shift supervisors and floor staff. So they supervise the residents during the day and night, ensure their safety, make sure none of the kids are fighting, check for contraband, like they get searched when they come in and out and give them their meds in the morning and at night. So some of the intern roles, um, most of the day is shadowing. I'm usually shadowing like the floor staff and stuff. To, like when I began, I was shadowing them to just kind of see how it works and like get to meet some of the kids. And it's hard to like listen to the clinical stuff and like I don't know the kids yet. So I've been shadowing a lot of the floor staff and a lot of reading of case files and incident reports. So I'm only there a few days a week. So when I come in, like a lot has happened in the time that I'm not there. So I'll usually go in and read like the incident reports and read about what's happened while I was gone. Um, but I would say the biggest part is these next bullets, like being a support system for the clients and for the kids and building a relationship with them is probably the biggest role, being like a role model for them and encouraging like them to just be healthy and not engage in the behaviors they have been. All right, and why I chose this place. So 
it was wasn't my first choice, but um, there's a lot of great benefits to it. Um, out of all the sites that I applied to, like obviously not all of them get back to you. So this is one of the few that did get back to me and um, they were very accommodating with my schedule, which was awesome. Um, and I'm a psychology major and a criminal justice minor. So when I was hearing about the type of clients they work with, it just seemed like it would be a really good way to combine both of those. Um, like I said, like she works with the case manager, works with DCF and like the court dates and stuff. So seeing how like that system integrates with like the human services psychology system was has been really interesting. So I like that a lot. And I knew that that would be a good spot for me. And it is a paid position. So I'm pretty sure all of NFI's internships are paid. I think so. But so obviously that's a big plus and it's not too far from campus. So that was a good thing. Some of the challenges, um, because you're working with kids, there's a long hiring and onboarding process. So I probably started this process like before winter break. And by the time I was actually like cleared and able to like start, I was already like a few weeks behind in like the internship class and stuff. So I would just say if you do want to, or you are interested in working for NFI, I would start as early as you can because they have a very long background check. They make you go get fingerprinted and everything. And so, and there's kind of a long interview process. So just a heads up if you're thinking about it. Um, they also require a lot of training, which luckily my class schedule this semester was able to accommodate that. And I was able to do a lot of the trainings over spring break. So it didn't interfere with classes too much, which worked for me. But if that's not the case for you, like when you're thinking about doing this, then it will be difficult to get the trainings done. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and it's also challenging because then a lot of your hours are coming from the training and not from being at the site. So if you know that being in a classroom isn't going to work for you, then I would maybe think about a different site. Um, and then just shadowing. Shadowing can be tough sometimes because it can kind of feel like you aren't doing anything and you're not being helpful, but you know, everyone knows you're there to learn. So it's not too bad. And I know for me, like, I would just like to have like a specific task. So sometimes when I don't have that, it can be a little challenging. But some of the things I like, um, they have, are very flexible with my hours. So that was one of the big things that I like brought up when I was interviewing and stuff. Like, did they have a certain number of like required hours that they would need for me or like certain days that I would need to work? Because a lot of the other places that I applied to like got back to me and they're like, you have to do overnight. So you have to work these days. And it just didn't work with my schedule. But they were very accommodating and basically said it's up to me when I want to work, which is great. And my favorite thing by far is building bonds with the kids. I've always worked with kids. I babysat and worked at camps. So I've always loved working with kids. But working with kids and knowing you're helping them and like pl playing a role in like their treatment and their lives is definitely much more rewarding. So I would say that's my favorite so far. And that's it. Neat, thank you. And I'm glad you said that about NFI because that is something I always talk with students about because they do require a lot of training because we are working with kids through most of the sites. It's a lot of work. They have a lot of requirements for the state and um, it's a great site but you just have to be prepared to fit all of that in. Um, so just starting early, um, if that's a site that's interesting for you is really important because um, they'll figure it out once you are all set and engaged with them, but that can take a while. So I'm glad you stuck with it. Um, so it sounds like it's going well so far. It's right. a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it, so. Good, thank you. All right, and now to close us out, we've got Hannah and Hannah talking about um, Windrush Farm. All right, here we go. So um, both Hannah and I 
are, are interning at Windrush Farm, which is right in North Andover, right on the Boxford line. So only like 15 minutes away from campus, which is very helpful. So their mission, mission statement at Windrush Farm promotes confidence, independence, and well-being in children and adults with physical, cognitive, or emotional challenges through the therapeutic riding and horse-related programs. Did it not go to the next slide? Oh, sorry, I thought you were doing that one. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, so our population is, they serve a wide range of develop, developmental, physical, emotional challenges, including, but not limited to ADHD, autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, fetal alcohol syndrome, paired vision, multiple sclerosis, spinal injury, traumatic brain injury. Um, we also have PTSD survivors, survivors of human trafficking and underserved youth. Um, clients from a wide range of organizations and local schools, including Ainsbury, Kimi Nichol Center, Perkins School for the Blind, Spalding Rehab Rehabilitation, St. Anne's Home, and community groups in Lawrence. Um, we also offer riding lessons for those without special needs and offer integrated classes whenever possible. All right, so here's some of the staff um, that we closely work with. I know um, Hannah works with Janet and um betsy is our um supervisor and then karan organizes all of the uh volunteers so whoever's horse handling and sidewalking she gets that um sorted out and if there's people who are absent she finds um replacements for them and then jen is one of the program directors and instructors so we work closely closely with her because she gives us all the directions when we're in the lessons for who's going to be sidewalking with who and what that certain client needs um, help-wise and what they don't need. So for sidewalking, you are basically walking on the ground next to the horse and you're assisting the rider as needed. Um, so basically... They ask that we do um, whatever the client needs. So sometimes uh, there will be clients that need a lot of support. And for that, you will put your arm over their thigh and you just kind of hold them in the saddle. But you want them to be doing a lot of the work themselves so that they're getting the most out of this therapy. Um, but sometimes you'll walk next to riders that are completely capable. They just need you there for um, just some extra support to either understand instructions or to help them focus. Some riders do get dysregulated on the horse and sidewalkers are there to help um, bring them back down and focus on the lesson. As for horse handling, um, these people will lead the horse um, and help regulate the horse if the rider becomes dysregulated. So horses a lot of the time feel what we are feeling as well. So if a rider gets um, upset or anxious or anything like that, the horse will feel it. And it's the job of the horse handler to help the horse deal with those emotions so that the rider can focus on themselves. And so for my intern roles so due to my availability I wasn't able to go on site for a while but um they do ha have a lot of research so my point people are Janet and Sandra um Sandra is our main research conductor on in Windrush um so what I've been doing lately is to see um, measures if what we do at Windrush helps clients so the main goals is to see if they can improve their balance focus concentration skills and all of those kind of like cognitive um, things along with some physical things. So with that, I am part online and part in person. For the online portion, I am actually doing lots of research, finding articles, different tests and measures to see if we can actually conduct those experiments in person at the farm. And then so I think now within the next few weeks, me and Sandra are actually going to be, be conducting our own um, experiment with um, some of the clients on on site and so we're able to see if they will be able to 
improve their balance, improve their um, listening focus and all that kind of stuff. So um, why I chose Windrush. So Windrush um, wasn't my first choice from internship, but um, I ultimately decided to go here because I love animals and working with kids. Um, I'm a dog person. I've always been around animals and I'm a dance teacher and I teach lots of kids around the ages that we work with at Windrush. And so um, it was a great chance for me to work with them, even though like this won't be my career goal to work with kids specifically. But since I do work with kids a lot now, it's very nice. Um, I've kind of always known about Windrush because I'm a big horse person, so I've known about um, what they do, and I know that they're always looking for volunteers, so Windrush was kind of a backup choice for me, but I'm honestly really glad that I went with Windrush because I'm enjoying myself so much that it doesn't even feel like work at all. Um, like, just being around the horses myself is even therapeutic. And all of the clients and staff are just like amazing to work with. And I get to work with such a wide variety of people. Like I'll be working with um, kids with autism in one uh, lesson. And then the next I can be working with um, a woman who suffered from a stroke. And it's just like really interesting to get to meet all these new people and like see how I can help them. So challenges, so I don't have any horse experience whatsoever. So this was very um, eye-opening for me when I started, when I chose to do my internship here. Um, they're very flexible with people who have never had horse experience, which I was very thankful for. And I also have very little experience with actual research and conducting research. I've done a few small studies like Google Forms and all that kind of stuff through classes. So I've never actually done a big research project like this. So those are my biggest challenges. Um, something that was challenging for me at the beginning, but I'd say I'm more comfortable with now is reiterating what the instructors are saying to the students. Because sometimes um, you'll be dealing with clients who are nonverbal um, or clients who are deaf. And that's really challenging to communicate with them when you don't know how they are comprehending it. But you just got to like talk to them a lot. And like this woman I dealt with who was deaf, she used a lot of hand signals. So I learned a lot of uh, like sign language and stuff like that. And I've just gotten more comfortable gradually going on uh, to communicating with people like that. And then, so what I'm enjoying, so I'm enjoying the challenges in this new opportunity. Um, I'm a crim major and psych major. So I thought I'd be doing an internship where I'd be in an office, kind of like more behind the scenes, not as hands on. So um, being able to be directly with the clients, working with so many people and getting this um, direct hands on um, work has been a great experience so far. Like I said before, I'm really enjoying everything I'm doing there because the clients are really fun to work with um, and the staff are really welcoming and the horses are also really fun to work with. I've been doing a little bit of volunteer work in the barn as well, and I've gotten to speak with some of the instructors about um, potential stuff for OT. So I've just been really trying to uh, network there and kind of just enjoy my time there and it's just awesome and that's it <laughs> um, yeah it feels like it's such a range of people you're, you're getting to work with which is really really cool so I love that I think that's such a cool experience to have so um I love it and they love Merrimack interns. Betsy tells me all the time whenever I send her anything about updates about interns for following semester she always writes a little comment about how much she loves all of the Merrimack interns so she loves having um, you all there it's really nice so it's like a really nice environment to be in so that's great. All right well I just want to say how much I appreciate all of you sharing it was really great to hear about everybody's experience. They're also different, which I love. I think it's so cool to hear about just 
the diverse amount of experiences that are out there. And I think it's really helpful for other students to hear about them too. So I really appreciate you taking the time to share it. And I hope you have a great rest of your semester at your internships. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.